All right, I'm back again with my camping box, my camping power supply, or I guess you could call it an emergency power supply box. It's got a USB port on the front here. It's got a double USB port there. It's got a double USB port here. It's got three 12 volt regular sockets um, to charge from a wall outlet. Uh, I have this XTC. I guess that's what it's called. Outlet. And I made some changes to the box, which used to be just all wired together. Now I got a couple of the marine grade bus bars. And this is the 12 volt side, and that's the 36 volt side. And I also put in a different meter that's you can toggle it on and off. And I will say up front, you know, this is a weird juice box. I would not suggest anybody like go out of their way to build something like this. This would be more like, you know, if you have some odd voltage deep cycle batteries laying around or whatever like this lithium iron phosphate battery, which you can get a couple thousand charges out of them if you take care of them right and whatnot. So anyway, so this is for camping and I changed out since the last time I changed this out. This is 20 amp button. Burned out the LED because you can't handle like 44 volts <laughs> when the 36 volt battery is fully charged. It's like 44 volts and that's a 20 amp step down converter meant for a 36 volt golf cart. It works fine. It's within the voltage parameters. And this is this weird solar charge controller. And it's it's a boost solar charge controller. It's about $35. You can put in 10 different programs. And I have this pretending to be my solar panel right now. It's a crappy 30 volt five amp power supply it can't really handle this type of work but for you know a few minutes of running it for testing it works okay but like I said it's not set up for this so this is that this is actually being powered on by this right now the solar panels in so this is pretending to be my solar panels and this isn't what this isn't the wiring I'm gonna use I, I'm gonna use 10 gauge uh, MC4 cable to my solar panels. I already got the solar panels ordered. And um, anyway, there's a connector inside the box that I can unhook and plug in my 52 volt e bike battery and also just change the program to program one. Let's see if I can do that. You have to unlock this. All right, it's unlocked. And I hit set. I go to program one and oh yeah I have to hit the, okay and that one now switched to program one I was on program zero zero and so this is you know reading what the power supply is giving it and then what I want to try to achieve with on the battery would be the 58 and a half volts because it's a 52 volt battery and 58.5 is what this battery will charge up to uh, I have another one that's also a 52 volt battery that uses the same 5.5 millimeter jack. So it went back into a locked mode once you get on there. So you have to unlock it again and now I can hit the set button again. And I can change back to my other program and hit OK. And so you can toggle back and forth. Uh, and I would have to of course unplug the uh, XT60 connector inside the box and there's a nice length of cord to bring out of the box plug it in and then hit start and then in this case it's already plugged in in the box and I want to try to achieve 44.5 volts and I would unlock this and then I would hit OK and this thing sounds like a hair dryer and I've actually got it turned halfway down it's actually much louder since I'm just testing it and it's only like 75 degrees in my house it's not like it's going to overheat. This thing will 
get too hot and just shut down. A few minutes, the fan will come on. A few minutes later, it will shut down. At least it did at five amps. I turned this down to two and a half amps. So it's not gonna try to take more than two and a half amps from those stupid little power supply over there. And it's charging. And once it gets to 44 and a half volts, it will shut off. And this should work for topping off the battery when we can. Provided the uh, panels I get work good enough. I got some Renergy panels. They're they're pretty well rated, and I'm gonna write. I'm gonna wire them in series. So for 24 volts, and generally you get about 17 or 18 volts nominal out of those panels. So I'll have around 30, 32 volts, 34 volts maybe in that neighborhood. Maybe I'll get lucky and they're really kick ass, and you know it'll give me a little bit more juice and. Uh, I'll definitely get more amperage out of those panels, I think, on a nice sunny day. Because those panels can do like eight and a half amps. Uh, and in series, you don't double your amperage, so it'll just be eight and a half amps, 24 volts. And this thing only does 10 amps, so we're closing in on the threshold of what it can do anyway. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can just hit OK and that'll shut it down and then that, yeah, see, <laughs> the fan just cut on on that thing. So anyway, it's a good thing I just shut it off. It's starting to get hot. I don't think I'm going to have that problem with the panels. Anyway, you can check back um, when I get the panels. Yeah, I just realized I left the box actually on. It's one bad thing about the LED not working. <laughs> um, and that... That's just whenever I plug that 36 volt battery in, whenever it's snapped into the system, that will, you know, that will either stay on all the time or it'll be, you know, on standby in the background. So in the wintertime, we live up way up north, so we have to bring all of our lithium ion and lithium iron batteries in just to be on the safe side anyway. So this thing will just be parked in this box in the winter. We can monitor it. Every time we go camping or whatever, the power goes out, boom. See, it, it already cooled off and shut off. So it's fine for testing. Yeah, so, you know, check back, uh, and I'll have some solar panels, and uh, I'll do some testing. I'll probably just run the solar panels right out my backyard, and you'll see the cable running out there, and, uh, and I'll swap it out. You know, this makeshift testing rig will be gone. So that thing's pretty cool. And, you know, if you have a scooter battery laying around, it's maybe a good repurposing for it. My son doesn't really ride that scooter that much. He's, he's, he's huge. He's like, you know, he's going to be driving in like less than a year now. About a year he's going to be driving. Uh, he would give a crap off the scooter. He only rides a scooter when he's going to go mow the lawn a couple times, once or twice a week. So it's barely getting cycled. So this is a good use for it. We can use it for camping or an emergency situation. So. I got something out of it that I can, you know, if we need be, we can charge two of these up too. If there's no wall power, or if we're in a place where we take the e-bikes and there's no way to charge them, uh, that was an option. So anyway, we'll probably have the solar panels in about a week or so, and I'll post a video about it.